Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. Hey, grab yourself a cup, of a cup of tea and stay with us for a while. It's always such a pleasure to connect with you like this. And as I go about, you know, my little business here in the Tampa Bay area, quite regularly I run into people who watch the program all the time. And boy, what a bonus that is, you know, to meet a viewer just face to face and we can stand and talk a little bit and I can learn something about the viewer, and you know, it's not only ladies who talk to me. A lot of times it's gentlemen who watch the program, and whoever it is, we appreciate it, and we appreciate your interest in it. And today, my guest again is Pam Stenzel. As uh, we explained on the last program, that I sat down with her and uh, made five interviews for a week because this subject is so vital, more so than at any time in American history. And also, she's a great communicator, and she's, for many, many years, has, uh, they call her the sex lady because she talks to teens about sex, which sometimes cannot be discussed in the home. And there's enough bad information out there. Um, so happy to bring you someone who can give you good and insightful information. And I think today we're going to talk about some of the consequences Boy, the consequences of sin. It's a heavy, heavy price you have to pay. But the consequences of living the way the scripture teaches us to live gives great benefits. And so staying with the subject, we have an offer for you. Uh, but before that, let me tell you what we're going to fix today. And I think you're going to love it. It just looks wonderful. Chocolate and peanut butter crispy bars. And... Um, this is something, and you know, as we approach the holidays and all, uh, some of these recipes get it come out that we don't use the rest of the year. But this, this one would be great for holiday parties and so forth. So we'll fix that for you. And um, I'll join Stephanie for that. But I want to again offer you this book. I hope you're ordering it. Sex has a price tag. It's by my guest. And it is so well done. The way it's laid out. And all of the information in it is for your good. So parents, if you're a little squeamish about this, get this book and read it. It will help you be a lot better communicator because you are the one. You're the most important part. And Pam did talk about that fact that parents are the first line of defense, the absolute first, and that kids care very, very much about what their parents think. So you need this book. You can... Use your credit card or your debit card, 1-800-229-0059. The address is on your screen. Just simply box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I urge you, I urge you to order this book. All right? Okay, this is going to be a fun one, Stephanie. This is so good mm -hmm. and so wrong mm -hmm. all at the same time. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, so we just made a dark chocolate brownie mix mm -hmm. according to package directions okay mm -hmm. you're going to spread over this crunchy peanut butter I am going to mix together chocolate chips and peanut butter and throw it in the microwave for mm -hmm. a second and then we're going to put in rice krispies yes and it's uh, important to use parchment paper on this because so you important now you gotta should I do out. this I'm not good at yes, it yes please you are good at it this you can is, do it Arthleen Rippy this has um, you have surprised us many times this has two different kinds of peanut butter in it. Oh, it has this is smooth and you're doing chunky. Mm -hmm. And this is just going to get melted in the microwave. 30 seconds, stir, 30 seconds, stir. Okay. This is a this is a Reese peanut butter cup brownie is what this is. When I think of how everything technically has progressed in my lifetime. What if our grandmothers could come back and see a microwave? What would they oh, do? Oh, all of this. All of it. It's yeah. crazy, right? Uh, microwave. I would like to know who thought of this one. I, I don't know. Like, just let's take some brownies and then let's just get yes. some peanut butter. Gonna get a, a... Let's take some Rice Krispies. Somebody had the munchies right here. Well, the... Uh, the Rice Krispies ought to just give it just that crunch. Oh, yes. And who who doesn't like crunch in a recipe? Mm. I like... I'm a texture eater. Uh-huh. So I want crunch in everything I eat. A lot of people are, but you know, that's the first time I've ever heard that phrase, a texture eater. I'm a texture... Oh, yeah. I'm a texture eater. Mm -hmm. 
So that was 30 seconds. I'm going to stir it. And then you stir it up a little bit. Yeah, and then I'm going to do 30 Try seconds again. more and we'll be done. The rumor is that it comes together in uh, two turns of the... Yes, two 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the second. I'd all, I didn't eat all my lunch just so I could taste this. Because well, I'm trying to be good because I had another moment over the weekend. Did you cry? I wanted to. I didn't. Uh, maybe some of our viewers don't know that she went for a checkup and everything was just great. I went for a checkup and I stepped on the scale they and put I her on the literally scales. busted out crying. She's, it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever done. Out of control. It was stupid. But I wasn't expecting the number <laughs> at all. I was not expecting it and then I saw it and I was Do so Do you want to share with us what that number was? No. <laughs> of course not. But I will say this. I'm on medication and the first... <laughs> well, not... Not that kind of medication. <laughs> I'm on my cancer medication, and one of the um, side yeah, effects right. is weight gain. So yeah. I'm blaming that. I'm not blaming the chocolate and peanut butter crispy bars. No. Okay? You're right. So look how yummy this uh -huh. worked out. Oh. And that was just two turns of the microwave. Two 30 seconds, yep. And then I'm going to put two, three cups, three cups of Rice Krispies. Mm -hmm. Mix that in. So that was a regular brownie mix mm -hmm. on the bottom. You did ch uh, chunky peanut butter, and, and then now she I'm did doing. Peanut butter. Yeah, I did smooth peanut butter, chocolate chips, and rice crispy treats. Nope, my weight gain doesn't have anything to do with the show. <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> Not a bit. Well, since you're on medication, uh, seriously, can you tell that it, it affects you? Oh yes, most really? definitely. The two top. Um, Side effects were brain fog, which, hello, and weight gain, and I can definitely attest to both of them. That's quite a duet. Seriously. Brain fog. But I'm alive, weight. so I'm happy. So we're just going to put this over, and then it just sets, right, in the refrigerator, mm -hmm. and it sets up, and look, those look professional. Uh -huh. Yes. I, I mean, come on. Them. Well, it's kind of so gooey. This would be a good one for your kids. Oh, yeah, just give me a They're bowl. Really crunchy. Give me a bowl of the, microphone. the chocolate peanut butter rice. And Dan's crispy. getting a really good picture of that. Yeah, don't move it because I've done that too many times, and then I get a groan from the peanut factory over there. <laughs> mm. So good. Yeah. I saved space. Mm -hmm. I ooh. I'm ooh, telling you, the rice krispies in that are just. Jeez, oh, Pete, mm -hmm. let me get it together here. Got it. What a treat. That is a treat. That She's is having heaven a moment. on a plate, let mm -hmm. me tell you. Oh, my. Uh-huh. Mm. Hey, we, we've been on a roll. We haven't done a really bad one for a long time. Every calorie, and I need a cup of coffee <laughs> with it. <laughs> Worth every calorie. Uh -huh. Not everything is. That's right. Not this everything is. is. This is. And it is called, I forgot. Yes. Chocolate and peanut butter crispy bars. That's why I didn't remember it so long. Called heaven. But uh, you watched us make it, and I'm telling you, so it amazing. really, it, that you could do this so far ahead of time if you're having company or something. And one of those, or did you want to? One of those is plenty for a dessert. I agree. Mm -hmm. It's because it's rich. Mm -hmm. It's very rich. So if you want this recipe, it's yours for free. Best way really is email. And we'll get it right out to you. But if you can't do that, just write to us. So the information is coming up on your screen. And if this is your first time to hear Pam Stenzel, you're very fortunate to hear it at all. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Welcome back. Uh, so glad to have you, Pam. And um, on the last program, you really got into some good information on on the parents' role. Yeah. I I just wonder how many, even in churches, I bet the percentage is minuscule, uh, who really talk to their kids about these things. 
Yeah, and, and part of it is there's a lot of fear that comes. First of all, they didn't have that modeled. So in other right. words, if we asked them if their parents talked to them, it didn't happen. So it's not been modeled for them. And then, and then the reality is our kids are being so bombarded with the other message in so many ways. I mean, not just TV and movies like it used to be or music. Now it's mm -hmm. their smartphones and their mm -hmm. tablets and, and gaming consoles for our boys. And, and, and the world has a way of infiltrating this message that is so contrary to, to what God would have us. And so the parents feel, a lot of times they feel like they can't, I like, don't know how. I, I don't, you know, there's too much. And, and first of all, for parents, just to remind you that your voice does matter. Even today, when we ask teenagers across the country what voice matters the most to you, by far it's always the parents. So, so even though it might feel like you're this little voice and the, a, a crowd of voices, you're not. So, so take the time to talk about it. But the other thing <clears throat> I think is some parents, this is what I find is a big fear with parents. Some parents are like, how can I tell my kids not to do what I did? Mm -hmm. And and so they're like, I feel like a hypocrite if I expect my kids to make a choice to wait for marriage if I didn't. And um, and it even gets harder when it, the child can do math and maybe yes. it was that child that was <laughs> a result early. of that, exactly right. <laughs> and so one of the things I've said to parents, because uh, of course in our first show I shared my own personal story that, that I am a product of rape, mm -hmm. and I said, Listen, do you think when I go and tell people that, that my conception was a result of a rape, that I'm going around saying, look at everybody go rape someone because look what you get, it's awesome? Yeah, no. Look what I'm doing. Exactly. My, what my birth father did was dirty, stinky, filthy, rotten sin. And my existence does not justify his sin. And, and, and it's the same with, with those of people who have sex outside of marriage. Maybe it wasn't rape, but it was still wrong and it was still mm -hmm. sin. Your child is a gift from God. Just because they were conceived Whatever. outside of that does not mean that they're not valuable. They are valuable. But what you did was still wrong. And both of those things can be true at the same time. That's Sometimes that's hard to separate. You know, I don't want my kid to think they were a mistake. No. What you did was wrong, and that decision was wrong. The child is a gift from should God. Should that confession, there sh should have... I always say to parents, you have to be honest, but there should never need to be detail. Don't give detail. I don't even like it when people do it in testimony, you know, at church, where <laughs> now I'm going to just dump all my stuff <laughs> all over you. Like, I don't need that. Mm -hmm. um, it's enough to say, we made mistakes. We, we made wrong choices. We have paid a price for those wrong choices. Mm -hmm. And we so don't want you to have to make those same choices and to pay the price that we pay. That's enough. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be detail. It doesn't have to be who, with, what, when, where. It's enough to just say there were choices made that were wrong. There's a price that we paid for that, and we don't want you to have to, to pay that same price. So, so hopefully if parents can get over that, and then they can begin to communicate. Well, the subject is immorality and all that, but... Um all sin has consequences. Every sin, exactly. You can't sin safely. I say it over and over again. And, and we would want our kids to make right choices in all areas of their lives. But certainly this one is important. But, you know, really, Paul talked about this sin and separated it from every other sin. Yes, he did. It, it's, you know, in 1 Corinthians, he said, um, all other sins are outside your body, mm -hmm. but he or she who sins sexually sins against your own body. And, and then he launches into that beautiful verse that don't you know that your body, mm -hmm. which the Greek word is not translated properly because we don't have a good one, that, that word body that we just put out there in English there, in the Greek it actually is an all-encompassing mm -hmm. term. It means body, soul, and spirit. A better translation would say you've sinned against everything you are, your physical body, mm -hmm. your soul, and your spirit. Because do you not know that your body, everything you are, is the temple mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit, whom you've received from God. You're not your own, you were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body, with everything you are. I think the American church has gone down a path of teaching uh, quasi-psychology and how you can feel good about yourself and, and all this, um, but nothing in the Bible has changed. No. And, and I, I know that I, I grew up you know, with the fear of God and, and that sin had a consequence. Uh, I used to use a scripture a lot in uh, Jeremiah, the fifth chapter, and that weeping prophet was saying, 
And this is what he said. He said, an appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. Mm -hmm. The prophets prophesy falsely and the priests rule on their own authority. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mm -hmm. that sound familiar? It sounds exactly. And yeah. my people love it so. Mm -hmm. But what will you do at the end of it? And whether it's uh, sex or uh, violating God's laws there or any other kind of sin, there's an end of it. Yeah. And it's something you want to shun. It's something right. that you don't want to have to experience. Right, absolutely. And, and, and if pastors would be really honest, a lot of the pain that they're dealing with in their congregations is a result of sin. Mm -hmm. It's like they're coming in with marriages that are falling apart, with mm -hmm. infertility problems, uh, you know, all of these issues that, and it's like we can trace this back or all the emotional damage from maybe having had an abortion that they never dealt with and, and got healing from. So you, you can see now as adults how all of these wrong choices made as young people now are affecting their marriage. And if our pastors aren't willing to speak truth, not only to the new generation so they can avoid it, but to, to the, the families in their pulpits that are bearing this price, then, then we, we aren't going to heal and get this weeded out of uh, not you, we can talk all the day long about the culture. Mm -hmm. It's in our house. It's in our house, mm -hmm. and and we certainly need to be helping in our home. I, as I was preparing for this, I got this idea. I think I thought I'd seen a headline somewhere, and thanks God for Google. I uh, kept looking till I found it, and it was an article uh, to youth pastors, and it said, "Quit entertaining the kids," and it. Uh, told the story of a young youth pa uh, youth pastor who went to a mega church and he wanted to see how uh, their youth program ran and all. And he said he sat there and watched the young people in a relay race spitting up water in a bucket. <laughs> That's just down re like <laughs> repulsive anyway. But they should have been learned in the Word of God. They right. should have been learning what he said. And if some of those kids don't like it then they don't have to come. But those who do desire the word, let's give it to them. Well, and you know what? Here's what I'd say, because I've been talking, to, you know, speaking to students for well over 20 some years. This, they want the truth. Yes, they, they want do. to be challenged. They don't want your silliness. I was in a church, you know, typical church, you can imagine they had the rock climbing wall, the, the bank of video game consoles, the gym, the coffee bar, the, and, and I said to the youth pastor, he goes, you know what, our kids are, bored of all of this. Mm -hmm. This church had spent all this money on stuff to entertain their kids and the reality is the kids are bored. It, our kids need to be challenged. They need to be they need to be sent over to the mission field, build something, mm -hmm. do, do something in somebody else's life and, and, and call them to be lights in their culture and to their peers and they'll, they'll meet that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if they all don't, that, that's not the issue again. <laughs> So. No, but uh, the church and the youth groups hold such an important key yeah. in all of this. Um, on uh, one of the programs when you were talking about the parents, that, that that's that first line of defense. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, of course, the church. Um, but the church's programs have changed too. And I'm an old lady and, and I used to hate it when I heard old ladies say, you know, it was this way when I was <laughs> Yeah, when but, I was a kid. But there was a lot of Bible learning. Mm -hmm. And there was called sword drills. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't heard of a sword drill, it's young people together. And the leader says, okay, uh, whoever finds uh, John 4-9, uh, find it first, stand up and read it. I can't tell you how much we love those. I bet we love those more than any kids ever loved a video game. Yeah. Uh, I was on quiz team. Mm -hmm. where we would memorize entire chapters, mm -hmm. entire books, and then we would get quizzed on them and we had to repeat it verbatim. So I used to tell people, I memorized as a teenager, I memorized the entire New Testament, Matthew to Revelation, memorized it in the King James Version. So so when, oh I, when I repeat goodness. it, a lot of it comes back. But, but listen, re I remember the days when I was a kid in church camp, mm -hmm. they said the Russians are coming and they're going to take our Bibles, right? That was, so the only Bible you will have is what you've memorized, mm -hmm. right? And that was kind of the thing that, that they used to kind of do. But but I'm so grateful now for the grounding that I had between Awana, which is also a lot that of scripture, a lot of memorization, and then in, as a teenager with Quiz Team. So yeah, we spent, yeah, we spent a lot of time in, in the scripture and knowing the scripture. And mm -hmm. it's so important because it's God's truth inside of you. When, when the FBI trains its counterfeit, um, 
agents that deal with counterfeit money, I, and I believe it's four years, they spend four years only looking at the real thing. They're never allowed to see any counterfeit. They spend years studying yeah. the real thing. And the principle is, if these agents know what the real money looks like so well, anything that's counterfeit, they're going to know it right away. And that is exactly the way we should be teaching scripture and faith to our children. They don't need to know every way it gets twisted wrongly. They need to know the truth so that any time a lie, whether it's from the peers, whether it's from the news, mm -hmm. whether it's from the media, their university professors, any lie that comes across their face, they're going to be like, it. lie immediately. I know the truth so well that I know that that's a lie. And that Holy Spirit accompanies the truth. Yes. And we'll check. Um, I want to bring up something while we have time that I think is, oh, uh, I don't know how you, how you could put the, you know, percentage of importance on it. And that is the fact that a 10-year-old boy can pull up pornography on a phone. Yeah. Um, can you talk about what pornography does to the brain? Yeah, porno pornography, and then listen, this is the Greek word in the New Testament for sexual immorality that gets to the, like the verses we mm -hmm. just talked about. The Greek word is porneia. Mm -hmm. And so if you look, if you study that Greek word through the New Testament, you'll understand the, the, mm -hmm. the concept is sex outside of the boundaries mm -hmm. of marriage even looking at it, all right? So so we've learned your your brain is one of the most important sex organs you have. It's mm -hmm. not the other physical ones, it's mm -hmm. it's here. Right. And and we are so affected by what comes through our eyes. Um, boys especially are very visual when it comes to sex. Mm -hmm. And so so they're very tempted that way. And when they see those images very young and get addicted to those Images. It is an addiction. It's too. an addiction because it it's lifts dopamine. A chemical in, it, Absolutely. Yeah, it lifts a chemical in the brain. Absolutely. And so now I have to have more. It has to be stronger. It, it's the same as with a drug. And then, then there were part of people who thought, well, if, if, if boys do that, then when they get married, that will all go away. No. Nothing shows that. It, and, and what's happened is I have... I have, I've, first of all, I'm, I'm using this person, they're a real person behind whatever that video or that camera, whatever it is, at, as a, a substitute and as an object. Mm -hmm. And now I'm expecting my wife someday or the person I say I care about to meet this ridiculous image that, 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 that isn't even right. It also portrays sex outside of any form of intimacy. And, and so for all kinds of reasons, we know pornography's wrong, shouldn't be done. Here's our problem. It is so easily accessed, and it's mm -hmm. because of technology. And if right. you hand your child, and some parents are doing it as young as 10, 11 years mm -hmm. old, a smartphone that has outside access to the Internet through apps or any other, you are handing them pornography, and there is not enough mm -hmm. stuff you can put on there to, to, to get rid of it. So one very wonderful pastor, I was speaking at his church in Kentucky, and I thought it was the greatest talk I ever heard about this with parents. He told parents, you cannot hand your kid a device without being 100% in control of what they have access to. Mm -hmm. And that means they're not gonna be able to have access to some of the apps they think all the other kids have, mm -hmm. like Snapchat and Instagram, you know, because pornography is allowed in through that. So none of his kids were never allowed to have any outside app in. The phone was used only as a phone, and then it was, it, it was mm -hmm. you know, he put some restrictions around it. And then he told his kids, and you parents, you need to tell your kids that I have access to your phone and every password all the time mm -hmm. so that I can go onto your phone and see exactly where you've been, exactly what's been downloaded to your phone, exactly what's going on. And if your kid or your young person, teenager, whatever it is, says, no way, you can't have access, my phone and my privacy <laughs> and whatever, he said, he, and I thought this was brilliant, he said, my wife, I am an adult man, pastor, and but I am a man, a grown man who pays for my phone, but my wife has access to every password. She can Good get on my him. phone at any moment and see everybody I'm speaking to, everybody I'm texting, any website that I'm visiting, any app I'm using. And I said, do you know how brilliant that is? He said, if I, as, a, um, as your father, yeah. has to have accountability to my wife, you will have accountability to me. Yeah, and besides, you didn't buy the phone. I did. Yeah, but, it, but even that, he goes, I bought my own phone and I'm still under accountability. You know, the Bible is so thorough, so complete, and it talks about the eye and how important it is. There are things I would not watch if you put a gun to my head. Yeah. I just, I just have that conviction. 
Job said, I will set no wicked thing before my eye. Yep. Whatsoever Jesus, things are pure, whatsoever yeah. things are honest, dwell on Think these on things. Yeah. Jesus said the eye is the lamp of the soul. Yeah. And when that eye is full of light, the body is full of light. Mm -hmm. And I think we really need that kind of uh, minute teaching mm -hmm. in our churches and all. Yeah. Because it's in the Word. Yeah. It's in the Word. Absolutely. You don't have to um, try to, you know, make up something. It's uh, that it's just so important what you look at and everything we go there's everything visual to tear us down right. and that we're going to have to take control of our own eyes and we're out of time but we'll we got one more day this week and we'll, we'll kind of recap uh, the things we've gone through since um, we began four days ago I'm absolutely thrilled and honored to have this lady on and uh, so much great truth has uh, come forth and so we've got one more so you stay with me um, got a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye and then we'll see you one more time this week. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758 or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers and we thank you for your support. Okay, let me again make this offer to you, this book by Pam, Sex Has a Price Tag, and it's a very expensive price tag. And so this is why we want to get this information to you. The address is on your screen if you want to write to us, or you can use the 800 number if you use a credit card, and we will get it out to you. I was thinking as I was watching uh, Pam and the things she had to say, all the things we had covered today, uh, it's very possible that some parents really are just not aware of the things that uh, she has brought up and to talk about the danger of a cell phone, the danger of a lot of the technical uh, bit of information that we can have, it can be very, very dangerous to a person. Pornography does raise chemical in the brain and it changes. I, I know of families that have been destroyed, divorces because of pornography. And it's been a privilege to bring you this information all week long. And uh, so Pam will be with us again tomorrow. I hope that you will be sure and tune in. And remember, friends, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.